Hello, and welcome back to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. Welcome to part 25 of our series. And in this part, we're going to look at a competition that's going on on Kaggle right now, looking for a recommendation engine. Recommendation engines are perfect graph problems. And, and in this case, if you do this well, you could win some fantabulous prizes. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to reach me on the internet. Okay, as a reminder of the important links within our series, the first is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. You're going to want to do that today. The second is a, a link to all the videos in the series, and the final one is the repository for all of the code. Now, getting into it, H&M, the clothing company, is sponsoring this Kaggle challenge to look at personalized fashion recommendations. In other words, based on your previous purchases, they want to get some sort of prediction of what they should recommend to you for future purchases. The link for it is shown here. Now you're gonna to wanna to go download the data files for this. They're, they're too big for us to just pull across the internet. So go download those from this website. Okay, I am using a very basic graph model. And in fact, this is not the entire data set. I just wanna do something for demonstration purposes. I'm going to create a node called a customer, and that customer is going to purchase another node called an article or an article of clothing. My customer nodes have the properties customer ID and age, and then my article nodes have a product name, a color, what section of the store they might be in, and a detailed description. Now those two nodes are related through the relationship called purchased, and purchased has a property called price. Now again, very simple model. You're going to want to think about your data model a little bit more than what I've done here. But I do want to throw a special shout out to Grant Beasley, who is working on a more detailed model. He's tweeting about it. This is his Twitter handle. So watch what comes out from Grant as, as he gets further into this problem. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna do this all from within Python, okay? And this this notebook is available in the notebook subdirectory in the repository. Um, if some of this stuff is not familiar to you, that's okay. Um, some of the previous bite-sized videos show you how to do things like connect Python to a notebook, or connect Python to a sandbox instance. Okay, so here I'm just reading uh, data frames in from those uh, the three files that you can download. One is articles, and that's one of our node types. Um, the second is customers, another node type. And again, you can see that there are many more properties here that I'm actually using, and that's fine. Um, like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. And finally are the transactions. This is the relationships um, between my customer node and my article node. Okay, and you can see here, this is the size of the data. So it's, an, it's a respectable graph. Um, now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to a sandbox instance. So I've created a blank sandbox instance, and we can go back and look at it just really quickly here. Okay, I can see that I have my IP address and my password here, and we're going to want those. Okay, so let's come down here. I just have a class for creating the connection, and this is in previous videos, so you'll want to go check that out. Okay, here's my IP address, my password, here's making the connection, and then I'm creating some uniqueness constraints on my two node types. Okay, now I've created these helper functions for how to add the nodes and relationships in. I've shown these before, but I just kind of want to walk through them really fast. Um, I will go row by row through my data frames, and I'm going to create an article um, of clothing with uh, the article ID, um, and then I'm going to set some properties such as my product name, my color, my section name. We saw those in the uh, um, graph model. Then um, I do that for customers, I do that for relationships, um, and then finally I have this thing here, insert data. I'm doing this in batch mode um, just, just because it can be faster, more efficient. Okay, I'm not actually going to do this for the entire graph. I'm going to do it for the first 10,000 tran uh, transactions. When you do this for real, obviously you want to use the entire graph. Okay, so now I am getting the unique customers and articles out of here, and I'm establishing some small data frames of my customers and articles. Okay, now we're going to add those to my graph. Okay, so this is um, adding my, um, my articles in, in uh, batches. Okay, we're going to add our customers. And in just a second, we're going to add our relationships. Okay, so while it's adding the relationships, let's come back. Um, this is my sandbox instance. And um, you can see here, it's, it's the, 
the UI has not quite fully populated yet. But let's just look really quickly at my articles. Okay, so I just clicked on that article thing here, and you can see that we've got um, some articles populated. Let's look at my customers. Okay, and these are the same uh, properties that we had before. And I can do something like call my database schema visualization just to make sure that it looks like I expect it to. Let's put it in graph mode. Okay, so I have customers and I have customers purchased articles. That's great. Let's quickly visualize what that graph looks like. I'm only going to do 100 nodes, okay, because sometimes these visualizations can get really big and um, they look like a cat's fur ball. Okay, so I have a graph. Cool. Um, let's come back here. I just want to say thank you. This should get you started with a great solution for this Kaggle competition. We can talk about, you know, how you might look at similarity, node similarity, or you might calculate similarity based on node embeddings. Those are two hints. They may or may not work out for you, but I'd love to hear about it. So tweet me at my Twitter handle here, and thank you for watching.